Welcome back to The Edge. What happened to Google's FAQ and how-to results? Beginner-friendly GA4 training courses from Google are here just in time, right? Just in time. The New York Times and other publishers are attempting to prevent AI from using their articles for training. Yeah, get off my lawn, darn AI bots. You're listening to News from The Edge for the week of August 14th, 2023, here on Edge of the Web Radio. From the edge of the web studios, here's what we're looking at this week. I had no idea what syllable I was going to emphasis first. So I just kind of like, just kind of clunked through the entire thing. Is it your first time reading it? It was the first nice. time I was reading it. <laughs> I try to slip things in there every now and then to make you smile. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> I've never read that string it's, of characters before. It's about time Google provided basic training. Yeah, really. It really is about time. You know. After, yeah. not before. But please, after, everything's shut down. <laughs> this is Edge of the Web Radio. I'm your host, Aaron Sparks. Thanks for joining us. Uh, we're covering SEO and digital marketing news of the week, separate from our weekly interview podcast series. So check that out as well. We drop it uh, Tuesday and Thursdays every week, so to speak. Uh, but check it out. Uh, we get the news to you as quickly as possible. That's why we're recording it today on Monday. Check out all the recent shows over at edgeofthewebradio.com. That's edgeofthewebradio.com. This is the digital marketing news desk of Edge of the Web Radio. Title sponsor is Site Strategic. We're proud to have them as a title sponsor of our show. Very proud of my team here at Site Strategic. In fact, we just got a new SEO manager in town. He, he just jumped on board our team of specialists. Really cool. Really cool. Really cool. I'm not going to name names, but uh, he's got some skills. What's his name not or her name? <laughs> got some mad skills. Just saying. This is like, like all the other skills that we have over at Site Strategic. What's their name? I'm not going to say right away. I gotta see if they're gonna stick around. <laughs> it depends on how this episode goes. <laughs> it really is, and they're That's listening. Totally. <laughs> Joining me this week to get his share on the news or his take on the news, I should say, is Morty Oberst Oberstein. That's his name. Wow, you're really good at the words today, huh? It's 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 falling out of my mouth like like I can't even use an analogy. On, it's like surf on, baby. <laughs> God, that was terrible. <laughs> With Morty Oberstein, head of SEO branding at Wix. My gosh, there he is. There's on on screen. Tell us how you're doing, Morty. I'm looking up your uh, SEO manager on LinkedIn. Employees. Nice. There's Aaron and Jacob. So, uh, and what's happening with Wix, Jacob? What do you know? What's going on at Wix today? Uh, they are we making have, uh, web pages. They're making web live analytics, <laughs> um, real time analytics. That's what I'm talking about. Real time analytics <laughs> inside of our Ooh. Wix analytics dashboard. Nice. Excellent. Excellent. Hey, you just... How many people are on your site right now and what they're doing? Sweet. I feel like that's something that would make me sad because no one visits my website. Aww. <laughs> what's, your, what's your website? Let's get some traffic over there. Nobody wants to see my website. Site strategics, <laughs> digital marketing specialists at Site Strategics. Wow. See? See, he's going to do this. On to the news while you keep on doing that. Go I ahead. haven't updated their profile yet. Evidently Is not. it Kyle Gray? It is not. Is it Jacob Mann? Yes, it's Jacob Mann. He's the SEO manager here. Let's yep. move on. Okay, we're yep. good. Do they have, wait, do they have glasses? Do they have glasses? Does your person have blue eyes? Is this or like eyes? a question? Exactly, 20 questions, right? It's guess who? <laughs> it's guess Are who? they wearing a hat? <laughs> <laughs> Are nice. they bald? Oh, gee. You're going to keep on doing this, aren't you? All right, from Search Engine Land, you can just pepper me with questions throughout this. Google reduces the visibility on how to and FAQ rich. Results in search. This is from Barry Swartz over at Search Engine Land. Google will be showing fewer and fewer rich results in its search results, specifically showing less FAQ and across the entire search result snippet and limiting how to rich results as well on desktop devices. Now, uh, checking out the uh, Rank Ranger sensors over there, mobile had a drop before desktop, and actually, Glenn Gabe jumped on that, I think, over the weekend, actually, and was pointing out that. FAQ structured data or feature snippets were still showing up on desktop, but mobile has completely flatlined. I don't know if you check that out, Morty, but the whole thing is Google has decided that structured data that's not going to be used won't cause any problems for search, but Google say there's no reason to remove it, says, says Google. But they are dropping the FAQ page structured data that's actually creating or they created, obviously, but they uh, scoop it up for FAQ-featured snippets. So that's going away. 
from mobile and it's starting to really start uh, disappearing on desktop. So why would they do that, Morty? Because that's pretty, well, a pretty useful By the way, function, the right? I liked it. I liked the FAQ. I thought it was great for, say, a smaller business or a smaller website who's competing in a space where there's larger websites yep. and the larger website wasn't paying attention and didn't bother with an FAQ or didn't have an FAQ, didn't make sense to have an FAQ on that page. And the other website, the smaller website did, and their web, their web result was just bigger and more attractive to click on. So I think that sucks. I don't know. It could be that SEO started putting FAQ markup on every page. <laughs> Yep. Like everything was an FAQ. Like, Absolutely. oh, sign up for this email, right? And all that's on the page is a form, but to enter like, you know, your email address, sign up for a newsletter. Yep. And then like a 50 million page FAQ. Exactly. No, that's right. it was completely abused. No, and I don't know. I don't think it's that. Well, I mean, their answer was uh, Google said in their update documentation that FAQ structured data rich results will only be shown for well-known authoritative government and health websites. So hold on a second. So you got to be well-known, got to have that authority and trust out there, or be a government website. <laughs> I, I, see, I you, see a dichotomy did there. You, did you notice in, in the FAQ results that like, the content was terrible? Like I, that, makes, that makes it sound like, well, we don't really know what's in there unless we really trust your website, mm -hmm. so we don't want to show an FAQ on the SERP. Hmm. I, I mean, my general experience wasn't, like, it was a normal FAQ. I think it Maybe was good, useful information. but I, it wasn't... I think yeah. it was simplistic FAQ answers, right? But sometimes yeah. that's what you get. And that's what feature snippets really turn out to be anyway, is very concise, lifted, extracted content, right? So here's another scenario in which we leaned into structured data for featured snippets. There was some traction there, some visibility there. And you know, I tend to agree with your first point is that it probably got really muddy out there. That there's so much FAQ that they're just clearing the lane and saying, yep, well-known sites, government sites, and medical. That's it. Could be. I mean, I still see him. I'm seeing him here for the, the query is kayak airline tickets. It's on desktop. On mobile, you yep. can see the Stenmark sensor says, like, they're all gone. Yep, yep. But um, how does kayak find such low flight prices? Like, that's, like, really, like, I mean, like, okay. Kayak prices are 2 billion flight queries annually and displays results, blah, 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 blah. It's not bad. It's just stupid. But that's on FAQ. That's an ad. <laughs> no, it's an FAQ. No, but I mean, like, that's a as, company writing an FAQ to as an ad. As right, an ad. Right, as an ad. Oh, yeah. How yeah, are we yeah. so oh, yeah. good at this? Well, <laughs> <laughs> I'll I, tell you. you know what question you're probably wondering? How are we so good at this? That's right. <laughs> Let's tell you. Let me list the ways and a list of Who order. is doing that in the how to markup? Like, how are we, like, <laughs> how are we so good at the little cards and <laughs> graphics of how they're so good at it? Yeah. <laughs> Hey, I kayaked this weekend. Oh, yeah? I did, yeah. Like the website or the boat? The boat, yes. Had a good time. Loaded down the river. That's why you're sore. That's <laughs> It's not because you're building anything. It's because you kayaked. I, I did both. Brings, brings you a meaning to Old Man River. Old <laughs> Man River. All right, that's, that's enough. That's enough. All right. Hey, we are proud to have Site Strategics as the title sponsor of the show. Our firm is a 19. Hey, you know they have a new uh, SEO manager. Oh my. They do. They do. They do. Keep on looking around. Does he have, does he have a mustache? How do you know he's the, a he? Is he wearing a hat? <laughs> a bowler hat. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, let, me, let me knock down. Like, not you. Not you. <laughs> hey, we actually is, is are it, focused on. Is it Maria? Maria. No. <laughs> Who's Maria? <laughs> Hey, we're a specialist in entity SEO, technical SEO, content SEO, which is kind of in the same vein as entity. We were just talking about that. Search engine marketing, social media management and marketing, as well as web development and conversion rate optimization for your website. Interested in what we can do for you? Just give us a call over at 877-SEO-4WEB or 877-736-4932. And our SEO manager will not answer that call. Do not call that number for that. We're going to run a poll. Let's run a poll. Guess who it is? Guess who it is, yeah. All right. Hey, yeah. Search Engine Journal from Matt Southern. Google launches beginner-friendly GA4 <laughs> training course. Yes! Amazing. Google's actually introduced a free beginner-oriented training course on Google Analytics 4 to aid businesses in optimizing their performance. Say it ain't so, Jacob. Say it ain't so. And it that ain't was, so. That was literally uh, four months after, well, it just shut down in July. Yeah, but this this would have been nice a year ago. Yep, really would have been. 
So the course aims to provide a starting point for people who want to learn about GA4 and have little or no experience. It focuses on setting up a Google Analytics account and validating the data collection itself. Google designed the material for small business owners, marketers, students, or anyone who's looking to start with analytics or people that are so bloody confused because you moved all our shit. How about that? Yes. <laughs> Play the Price is Right music now. <laughs> <laughs> so the training program is divided into several sections, getting to know Google Analytics, go through the entire setup process. Sections are focused on using digital analytics to actually boost your business, understanding the data handling inside of analytics, setting up your analytics account and property, preparing your website and app for data collection and confirming that the collection actually exists. Managing the account access and settings, enhancing reports with dimensions and metrics. Finally, there's the meat right there. So check it out. Well, it's eight minutes. <laughs> Do you see that? Yeah. That section is, is eight minutes long. Oh, boy. I, I read this. I hear this. I see it. And I, it looks like it's for somebody that's never done any analytics at all. Right. Which is fine. That stuff should be out there. But right. if you're somebody who had analytics running before and you're struggling with the changes now, I don't think this is for you. I think you're just going to be frustrated because you've already set it up probably. You're already collecting data. You're just trying to find yep. those nuggets that you're used to looking at, and now you have to build custom reports, and there's just not a lot there to figure it. Like, yeah. you got. I would also of, hope that, no. that welcome would be longer than one minute. I mean, how welcome could I really feel in a minute? <laughs> you need a lot of, a lot of uh, welcoming, don't I you? I like to really feel welcomed when yeah. I go to an online course. What's a good quota of time? To be able to welcome Morty. We'll try to make sure that it happens. At least, at least 11 minutes. 11 minutes. All right. So yeah. uh, when we're at Brighton SEO, right? Yes. Uh, we got to have a, an 11-minute introduction for Morty. How about that? If you, you could. <laughs> <laughs> if you know, think of all the things you could say about me in 11 minutes. Oh, gosh. I, dude, I've been doing that for like two and a half years. Plenty. I, I got plenty of stuff. <laughs> all right. Uh, third article from Search Engine Land by Danny Goodwin. New York Times says, don't use our content to train AI systems. The Times has actually changed its terms of service, aiming at to prevent AI companies from using the media organization's content to train their systems. Now, we reported last week that Google was saying, hey, unless you tell us otherwise, right, we're going to use all your content out there to train our AI engine, right? Well, the fact of the matter is, is that that kind of is irking a few people off. And I think rightfully so. And I think, Morty, this is the showdown where we've been talking about yeah, how you're using week. Yeah, well, yeah. But this is the showdown. We were always talking about Google extracting content for the SERPs without citation or creating an aggregate of a number of different citable sources but not having it there. We've been losing our content, our destination content to the SERP and now Google's wanting to train its AI on all content. And this is the first volley. Honestly, this is the first volley shots fired from New York Times as well as a number of other organizations saying, do not use our content for your own. Where's the monetization? Where's the transaction? Where's the value, right? That's what we said last week, right? Yep. Google's had a rocky relationship with a lot of these publishers over time for a variety of different reasons. And I guess now the shoe's on the other foot. So when that happens, you wear it. I'll do that into a, a mid-journey description. Shoes on the other foot, wear it. See what comes up. Probably a picture of someone wearing shoes. On all feet. <laughs> and having multiple feet. <laughs> all seven feet. All, uh, carrying Bud Light. <laughs> <laughs> So, I mean, they're, they're, uh, you yeah, wanna, like, and what's Google going to do? Like, I mean, what's to say? And again, it's not like I'm picking on Google saying this, but sure. all of the AI platforms, open AI, where's the incentive, right? You, you did this, you trained on this already kind of through the back door. Yep. And, and now, you know, the goose is loose. I don't know. That, I don't know if that makes any sense, but <laughs> the goose is loose and the cat's out of the bag. That's what I'm looking for. Cat's out of the bag. Goose is loose. <laughs> Only animal yeah. parables. Yeah, same thing. <laughs> My God. And now you can't you can't do it under the cover of night. I missed that. No, what? Exactly. Cover of night, cats are loose, gooses are cooked, bags. The dogs are, are out. Bags around the yeah. Who let the dogs out. There we go. It's all all the things. So cover it all. The frogs all right. are riveting. All right. So check out what they actually wrote in their terms of service in the prohibited use of the services section number three use the content for development of any software program including but not limited to training a machine learning or artificial intelligence ai system 
So if you want to see evidently how to start pushing back, watch New York Times. Google and New York Times already have a lucrative commercial agreement in place, says Danny. But that deal is about working together on tools for content distribution and subscriptions, not this freeform training. So this is it, is that... Are we going to actually allow this machine learning investment of other companies to be able to take that, learn from it, and then keep us from our own users because it's all going to be used at the SERP level, not at engagement of our websites or services? I really do think we got something here that's kind of a shot heard around the planet, I do believe, but I, I could be wrong. I reached out to Bard for comment, hey, Bard. and it said, uh, terms of service, who reads that? <laughs> so I don't know what's going to happen. Damn it, Bard. <laughs> hey, 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 we're proud to have Bright Local, the all-in-one local SEO platform as a new sponsor on the edge. Bright Local is the leading local search platform that helps both businesses and agencies drive more traffic and more leads from local search. You've got to check this out. Not only can you get everything you need to grow your business, they're also really good people. And on August 30th and 31st, Bright Local is hosting a local SEO for good live. This is a virtual local service conference, and it actually doubles as a fundraising event for a multitude of charities and MPOs close to their hearts of the experts who are speaking and presenting. So check that out. Get a ticket. Get a few tickets. Get your team involved. And Dive into a conference where you've got a lot of really, really great speakers talking about local SEO. It's a good consortium. I think Greg Gifford is on there as well as who else did I see? Joey Hawkins. Crystal Carter. Crystal Carter's on Crystal there as Carter. well. Is Crystal? I didn't. I didn't realize that. Really? That's insulting. Hey, Crystal. Aaron didn't notice you. I hear her all the time. The dulcet tones of what she brings to every Surf's Up podcast are amazing. Surf's Up. I only know Surf's On. <laughs> Check it out. Hey, and there's some more generosity from Bright Local. Listeners, you can actually level up your local SEO with a 14-day free trial today and grab a special Edge of the Web offer of $75 in a local citation building credits when you take up a subscription. Just go over to edgeofthewebradio.com forward slash Bright Local to sign up. And we'll also put in our show notes the uh, local SEO for good link as well so we certainly want to champion that and go uh, go dive in and listen to crystal carter because you know what we knew she was there all the time we just wanted to bait morty how about that no you didn't <laughs> well hey, hey morty you want to hear some ai news huh 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 as if yeah, we had AI no... news i'm cool if you have ai tools i'm not interested oh really oh trick oh hey, i got some tools for you hold on a sec ai news oh, okay. over at search yeah, engine roundtable bing search select text to search <laughs> new bing search select text to search bing chat he does this to me on purpose i think <laughs> 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 all right all right so barry actually reported how bing chat lets you select text from the bing search results to conduct another search now bing is actually expanding that to be able to let you search directly on bing chat not just in bing search so frank Send it, man, actually spotted this and he posted it on Mastodon. There's a video actually showing that you can actually select directly the search result and it will fire off into chat where you can then search and propagate another chat search along with that. Is that what we're seeing here? So you can search, yeah. So cool. Yeah, cool. Yeah, fun. Select the text. Chat. That's a good thing. AI. Check this out. Talk about training. Amazon is reportedly testing generative AI tools for sellers. Here we go. Oh, boy. Yep, 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 yep. This is from Search Engine Journal from Christy Hines. Amazon is testing an AI tool that generates titles and descriptions for product listings. Okay? The tool is actually aimed at minimizing manual effort but still requires human oversight for compliance. Eh, you know what? That's going to be more of a guideline than a rule after a while. We really don't need human oversight, right? What's the worst that could happen? Yeah. How smart humans are to begin with, I'm right? saying. I really am. They just get in the way. E-commerce platforms like BigCommerce, Shopify, and Wix have announced similar AI-powered features. You know, Indeed. You know, know one of those guys in there? Wix? Yeah. Yeah, I heard of them. All right. I love so them. I saw a lot of things on, on this over the them. week. Oh, they, they're, very, they're very good people over there. I saw a lot of this about product reviews here over the weekend, AI-generated product reviews. And, in fact, an entire website just rolled out with thousands of products, all 
with AI generative content only on them from product descriptions. So talk about trust in that particular beast. So here's the deal. Here's my concern about this. Yes, it's easier, right? But if we're in the product review update version 7 in our algorithm changes over the years, year and a half here, do we actually really think it's a good idea to go back to a wholly generated AI description of a product when we are being trained by Google that that's really not the best way to actually write reviews on products? Or are we in a place where this is simple enough information that it doesn't really need that much human crafting? Now, we, I'm hearkening back to the conversation we've had before, Morty. Is this more yeah. utilitarian type of scalability that uh, really doesn't need that much human intervention? What do you think? I think it depends. I mean, you're selling like tube socks. I mean, like, like they're socks. And they're, like, and they're what's, full of tubes. What, 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 what's there to write? Like, <laughs> your feet will be comfy in these socks. They are made of cotton, these socks. They will fit your feet. They are socks. All right. But what if it could rhyme? It, yeah, make it a haiku. Do oh, some, great. something yeah, more prosaic, right? Home. I mean, look, let's say it's a more complicated product, and you want to add in your USP and your branding tone. Of course. So you're going to have to add that in afterwards. I think, like, yeah, if all the content in the world to create, asking it to write a product description of a pretty generic product is probably one of the better use cases. Okay, I'll give you that. I'll give you that. But I also think that if you start chipping away at the opportunity to have that human investment be creative, you're going to lose so much in the creation of, you know, the Three Wolves t-shirt. I mean, it's, it's you'll never have that human experience that you get from, you know, the Amazon description of sugar-free gummy bears. you got to check that out. First off, most people are probably taking, first off, are just taking the manufacturer's description anyway. That's, right? all, that's I mean, all we're talking about, really. And it's kind of blowing out of a proportion. I guess my point is, it's a slippery slope whenever you make you hear an entire website launching all AI-generated product descriptions, not reviews, descriptions, just want to be clear there. And if Amazon's taking this on as a opportunity to give it to the sellers that they can actually use some tools that they train, and you better believe they're going to be spiking it with, hey, we see some really good click-through traffic on this type of title and description generation, right? So that's actually a better use of it because it could very well get into a systematized product monetization and product upsell scenario is that all of a sudden dynamic headlines that are tested out, these are the best ones that are suited for this type of product and use our AI to actually write that. And then you've got an additional value off of selling through Amazon, right? Right. I mean, let, let's go through it. Okay, here. These socks, 75% cotton, 20% nylon, 3% polyester, 2% spandex, made in the USA, no closure, closure, no closure, closure. Machine wash, fun, rainbow, and classic colors make these triple stripe tube socks perfect for any occasion. I mean, like, did a human actually write this? And if they did, couldn't a machine do it? Well, I didn't understand the whole closure thing. I, I was beginning to understand that. Closure, was, closure. I think it was like literally tube stock had two close, closures on it. So it was no longer a sock. It was a pillow. Hmm. Right? I, no, I just, but, based off what Morty just said, I just ordered six pairs. So <laughs> we'll find out soon. Get wholesale socks at a discount. Bulk socks for everyday wear. Get 24 pairs of crew socks so that you never have to worry about running out of socks. <laughs> get everybody's socks. Choose socks for everybody. Colors. If they're cheap enough, you don't have to do laundry. Get now, again, these crew socks are perfect for everyday wear. Everyone's writing that. It's, the AI is already writing it anyway. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Are there socks not approved for everyday wear? No, some There's, socks. Yeah, are not. you put these on, you no, might die. Yeah, you, you gotta, you, are, are yours <laughs> it's, double checked? It's going to be a, a risk warning. This thing should not be great. used for every like day. For gifting, art projects, donations made with eighty percent cotton, fifteen percent, blah blah blah. Sock the, pockets. The the percentage here in this part differs from earlier. Sure That's great because before I said eighteen percent oh, so polyester, here it says fifteen percent polyester. Yeah, Don't so buy these socks. It's in the, an it's, AI hallucination. It's <laughs> yep. We'll fit children. Okay. Okay, we're going to stop there. Like the whole kid? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, I should have got reading. Uh, shoe sizes, <laughs> 9 through 11. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> you, you know you know what people fear? Socks. 
You know what people fear? It's not socks. It's not AI descriptions of socks. According to Axios, there's a poll here that says Americans distrust the AI giants. No. 30% are mostly concerned, 32% somewhat concerned, and 16% are neutral. Only 22% collectively are actually excited about AI. May <laughs> you know what? These are the same results you get when you ask, do you like Americans? <laughs> <laughs> You're terrible. Are you afraid of Americans? 56% of voters support a federal agency regulating AI. What's the stats on here? Where do we get our numbers from here? From AI? This <laughs> AI. The Artificial Intelligence Policy Institute actually ran this and uh, shared it exclusively with Axios. So the point Can being- Can I tell you though, mm -hmm. I talk to my neighbors about AI and they have opinions. They have lots of opinions about AI. I don't think they know what it is. They don't know what it is at all, but they have opinions. No, they know oh, AI. They don't like actually know. They're not, they're not like, chat GPT, sure, sure, bar. Sure. They yeah. don't know what's going on, yeah. but they have opinions about it. And their opinions are what? You, you, you ran your own poll there of two people, right? I had to ran my own poll. I don't know, it's stupid. 100% stupid. So they have opinions and they're not favorable, yeah? Or are they? Do they like it? I don't know. I don't know what they are. They're kind of nonsense, to be honest with you. Your neighbors or their opinions? Both. Okay. All right. He's spiraling, I can tell right now. Yeah, he was not I, I got to I I I I I juice him with some AI tools. Check this out. Magically create video documentation with AI. This is a, again, we're not sponsored by these guys at all. This is called Guide with 2D, G-U-I-D-D-E. Check this out, dot com. Magically create stunning onboarding videos. I was actually really interested in this, is that you can actually go through and go through your work process Check this out, Jacob, and actually navigate through some complexity in creation of something through software or documentation or what have you, and fire this thing up, and it actually creates a narrative video step by step by step by step that it's watching, and it gives you the ability to actually embellish and create and act some things out that aren't actually steps that it loosened in on what have you. But think about this as a tool to be able to create wiki documentation for a team right, of how to do a particular process, this is actually pretty cool. I got to check check this out. It captures the flow of all the different things, and it creates a storyline for you. So? Can I ask? Mm -hmm. Let's say the product requires that you show video documentation that has hands. <laughs> 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 then what happens? Yeah, so, well, you've seen AI hands before, right? They're getting better. They are? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> getting better. <laughs> there should be a disclaimer make any documentation through video with ai disclaimer does not work it requires hands this, hey, six fingers video. on each hand are fine as long as they're all doing work together right as long as all five hands are working harmoniously together <laughs> another tool go check out 60 sec dot site it generates landing pages. And again, I have no idea if this is actually a worthwhile endeavor, but hey, guys, got to get it over to you. It'll actually generate a landing page for you in 60 seconds, no code and AI content. So you just describe the product service or the idea, and they say they'll handle the rest. All the content design, optimized for speed, call to actions of your choice, and an email form to land everybody. Now, don't know... <laughs> How well this thing rocks and rolls, but... Uh, Look at how many they've made. It's amazing. Look at the... How many have they made? 50,800 sites have already been built. Oh, my gosh. 50,800. Ooh, let's try it. I want to create a site for... <laughs> Barry. <laughs> yes. <Let's> do it. <laughs> Barry Schwartz needs another web page. He does. He really does. Yep. He does. Barry Schwartz <laughs> SEO. While you're doing that, let's talk about Inlinks here for a second. They have a new social media tool from Inlinks that actually solves a big problem that other tools just can't. Inlinks doesn't use keyword research tools that tell you what to talk about on social media. It uses your own content. That's right. Inlinks actually starts planning a social media campaign by analyzing your current website and creating topical, relevant ideas to engage your audience and help build a valuable social media content plan. So check that out. Don't worry about 
trying to create relevant call to actions because it's all sewn right into the mix. If you're an agency, you can actually provide quick, relevant, and actionable, and exceptional social media schedules for your clients based on their current website content and capabilities. Got to check that out. It's probably a lot better than the 60-second website. I'm just thinking. Go to edgeofthewebradio.com forward slash inlinks to claim your free inlinks account today. All right. So you, you but, cooked up something over there. What's going on, Morty? First off, it's their domain. Yeah, it's so their like, domain. Have, and uh, Yeah, you, it's like you have, oh, I have a website. You don't have a website. You have a page on their website. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's just amazing. Let's do another one while we're talking. Create, let's see, a site stra. Oh my God. SEO <laughs> landing page. Okay. I am not a robot. That's not true. <laughs> so I did one for Barry. It's a Barry Schwartz SEO dash playing baseball. Boost oh. your website visibility with Barry Schwartz SEO <laughs> services. Learn how to hit a home run in search engine rankings. Get notified about updates. No ice. Your email. Key features. Why choose Barry Schwartz SEO advanced keyword research. Discover the most relevant keywords for your industry and optimize your content accordingly. On page optimization, improve your website structure, meta tags, and content to enhance search engine visibility, link building strategies, build high quality backlinks with Barry, oh. a technical SEO audit, content creation, performance tracking, all the generic crap you see in any SEO landing page. There, Damn, I got I got hire Barry. I mean, he he sounds like he's got strategics it down. SEO landing page boost your online presence with their SEO services, <laughs> and it's literally <laughs> the same page with the same content. Key features: <laughs> wide user SEO services. Unbelievable. <laughs> Sixty seconds to create a page that's literally the same. the same page as your competitors. Why outrank them when you can be them? Why not <laughs> homogenize everything, folks? Just and get it all into. We're one. now up to fifty thousand eight hundred and twenty-eight sites <laughs> built using this tool. Holy crap! And they're all the same. They're all the same. All right. So, uh, word of caution: we don't test this out, nor do we endorse these tools. But it's kind of fun to actually come across yet another tool that's weird in the AI realm. <laughs> You know what though? Like, I mean, mm. I played that one too. Too. It gave a decent layout. Like, mm. it kind of like if you're just like completely brain dead and can't figure out what to do, it's not a terrible <laughs> starting this off. This product point. is great. If it's you're not. A, it's not a bad dead. jumping off point. If you're if just, you can't think, if you why not go over? Absolute you, moron. Listen, here's my pitch. If you don't know what the <laughs> internet is, mm. this is a great tool. <laughs> I think we found what a great demographic to listen to this show. <laughs> Once you finish your beginner GA4 course, yep, yep, go, go make a here. website. Go make a God. All right, finishing up, fast track from there. Always with the with the, the Morty shot with, with a cup of coffee. Cheese in front of the camera, right? We just got to get you and Barry in the same room, and I'll snap a whole bunch of pictures and replace the whole thing. He avoided me at yeah, SMS. Harry to go to Brighton SEO in San Diego. Saying, get, hey, we'll send him a T-shirt. And okay. invite him. Okay. Yeah, that'll, that'll do it. <laughs> 75% of SEOs are not happy with Google Analytics 4. All right, let me stop you right there. Mm -hmm. Why didn't they interview the last 25%? <laughs> <laughs> You know what's for you? <laughs> SEO for absolute morons. Boost your website's visibility with SEO. Learn the basics. It's, oh, it's, it's the same everything. page again. Search that string of characters. You're going to find it everywhere. Uh, so he posted a, a poll on Twitter. Asked if SEO's thoughts on Google Analytics GA4. 50% said they hate it. And 26%, they, they, they were somewhat negative thoughts on GA4. So about three quarters of SEO saying they are not pleased with that platform. Please note, he says the story was posted yesterday, but I had to remove it and post my own Twitter poll instead of citing a public poll posted by someone else. The results were about the same, however. <laughs> How many people actually had that? 1,700 people, 1,739 votes, and over 50% hate the freaking thing. Ouch. I wonder if the 5.7% that clicked love it, like, got confused. <laughs> Talking about something else. Bots. Yeah, <laughs> about AI or whatever. All right, last piece over there at Search Engine Round, round Table. I just can't speak today. I can't <laughs> speak. Round Turbo. Search on. <laughs> Search on. <laughs> whatever. We're done. Google. From Google. Text to HTML ratio makes no sense for SEO and ignore it. He says, John Mueller is at it again. 
saying that text-to-HTML ratios are not a thing for SEO. He said on Reddit, it makes absolutely no sense at all for SEO and should be ignored. Ignore any report that gives you a text-to-HTML ratio. He says, please ignore any report. Zero, zilch, nada, it makes no sense. It never was a thing. You'll see more of an effect if you change the font <laughs> or text color. <laughs> That's great, right? <laughs> <laughs> Can we please get these tools on board with this? Oh my though? gosh! Because we have clients it's, that look at bonkers. some of the tools we look at, and absolutely, they, I had to answer an they email last do. week. Yeah, I had to answer an email last week. Like it's ridiculous! I see a bunch of our links are toxic. Yep. What are we doing about it? I was like, we're not doing anything anymore. Right? It's not a you thing. You play anymore. the Britney Spears song. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's going to be the next right. thing. I see we have a you know twenty percent of our pages have a, a low text to HTML ratio. How can we fix that? Like, you don't have to. Nope. But like the tools have got to get rid of those. They do. They and do. I think they're afraid to. They, they got to jettison them because I mean those factors go down all of a sudden. The the audit tools are no longer nearly as useful or scary as right. they were in the past, right? Or I think their big fear is if I get rid of that tool, they'll go somewhere else that is showing them more things than I am. Right. I feel like the the, the, the audit tools are created for like SEO spammers. Like it's yeah. built for spammers. I can take all that and say, hey, did you know that this is happening on your website? This is happening on your website. And we get those emails from clients as well. Go, What's this email all about? It's because they're an idiot and trying to chop for your business with nothing at all from a level of expertise in their email. They're just, they're just trolling you, right? So pay attention to not paying attention to those things. But those tools absolutely have to snap into gear. And uh, we're interviewing Natalie Arney here, and we're going to actually camp around talking about Lovely. tools Lovely. and panic that SEOs have, that these tools are not ready for SGE. And so that's a real thing right there. It's not only about trying to jettison some of the old crap. It's how are they going to actually learn how to map to the new SERP, right? Ain't going to be a thing in, in the near future. But in, you know what's in the near future? Hashtag SEO chat every Thursday, 1 p.m. on X Twitter thing. Who's hey, coming up, yeah. sir? Jared Bauman. Good job. Good job there, Morty. Yep. Pat yourself on the back. I knew it this time. <laughs> I got what, it right. What are we talking about? I don't know. I, I should always. I had it. I had it there. We are at 100% right there. I have to ask that <laughs> next question, don't I? Should, should just roll credits. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a failure. News out. That's it for us. News out. <laughs> Check Join out. us for SEO chat. 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Thursday. For who knows what? You don't even know. About about SEO. Just, you just need to be there. It's about SEO chat. About SEO. SEO FOMO. No, nope, uh, that's about, on Monday. Sorry, about deleting content on your site. It's perfect for this week. How oh, did I not okay. get that right? Cool, nice. cool, cool. Holy crap. Didn't CNN wow, or some other uh, news organization just chop down a slew of their own content here. Everybody's talking about yeah, it. Yeah, that's, that's perfect timing. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Way to be prepared there, man. All righty. Sir, it's been a pleasure. Always a great thing. Thank you. Yeah, Thanks yeah. for having no, me. I was, as well. I, I, was oh, I was talking to Jacob. Sorry. Yeah, hang on, Marty. You're yes, next. Yo, you're so funny. <laughs> That's you it, got Marty. me good. Yep, 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 yep. Well, uh, don't be, be a piece of cyber driftwood. Damn. Oh, oh, damn it! He got it. That darn kid. All right. Serps on. Check, uh, check out Serps on. <laughs> <laughs> Check out our second episode with Sarah McDonald as we talked about SEO mindset. Had a really good conversation with her about her podcast as well as just having a healthy mindset in the SEO industry. It doesn't get talked about nearly enough. So check out the second interview. Check out the first interview as we're talking about a lot of the different key points of that show. Just find us on Twitter. You'll be able to find us there. But for all of us over at Edge, be safe and be well and whatever Morty said. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.